Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, we are on lesson two now in the second module, and it is using the number line to model the addition of integers. Okay. So, exercise one is a real world introduction to our addition. Answer the questions below. Suppose you receive $10 from your grandmother on your birthday, you spent $4 on snacks. Using addition, how would you write an equation to re represent this solution? All right, so if you're given $10, you start with $10. That's possible. Spending four means to subtract from that. I said using addition, how would you write that? So it's going to be 10 plus a negative four. And that will be the same as 10 minus four, which will come out to be $6. So if you have $10, Spend four dollars, you now have six. Now, the next question says, How would you model your equation on the number line to show your answer? So, here's how we're going to use number lines we're always going to start at zero, and the first number, if it's positive, tells us to move to the right. So, that means to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten units to the right. So, now we're at ten dollars. Grandma gave us ten bucks. Then we have to do the next, which means to add a negative 4. Negative means to move to the left. So I'm going to start at 10 and go 1, 2, 3, 4. And where I ended up, I suppose I should put an arrow here to show the direction of the arrows. And we ended up at 6. So I moved to the right 10 and back to the left 4 to end up back up at 6. Okay, example one. Complete the steps to find the sum of negative 2 plus 3 by filling in the blanks. Model the equation using straight arrows called vectors on the number line below. Okay. A. Place the tail of the arrow on. So what they're saying is, like right here, where did we start? The starting point is always going to be 0. And then we do our first calculation, which is left 2. Draw the arrow two units to the left of zero and stop at negative two. The direction of the arrow is to the blank since you are counting down from zero. It's to the left. Start the next arrow at the end of the first arrow or at this negative two. Draw the second arrow three units to the right since you are counting up from negative 2, and then stop at positive 1. So it says circle the number at which the second arrow ends to indicate the ending. All right, so back here, I don't like how they broke up, broke this up by pages. If an example starts on one page, you should finish on the second page. But I have to work with that. Um, so we're doing negative 2 plus 3. So I'll write that here. Negative 2 plus 3. So what we had written was we start at 0, and we go left 2. And that is a vector. Okay, another way of writing this, and let's switch now, because vectors are straight arrows. Let's use a vector now instead of using those counting. So we're going to draw a straight arrow and end up at negative 2. And then it tells us to move right 3. So I'll draw another vector just above, and I'll go 1, 2, 3 units this way, and end up here. So it says circle the number at which the second arrow ends to indicate the value. And that is the answer to our problem. So these are what vectors look like. So I just use these these. arcs, if you will, to show the thing, like a ball bouncing, counting as I went, but from now on we're going to use straight arrows like these, and they're called vectors. Now it says repeat the process from part A through F for expression 3 plus negative 2. So part A said where do we start, and that is at 0. Okay, so again, that's why I don't like examples that go back and forth, or over two pages. So place a tail on the zero, and then draw arrows, and so forth. So we placed the beginning of the arrow at zero, 
And now we're going to go three. That's the first number we have, and that means to go to the right three. And that's where we end up, is right here. That's our stop. That's our plus three. And then we're going to add a negative two. A negative two just simply means to go back to the left two. And our end point is our solution. So three plus negative two is one. Okay, so it says, what can you say about the sum of negative 2 plus 3, which equals 1, and 3 plus negative 2, which equals 1? What can you say about these two? Well, they both equal 1. Does order matter when adding in numbers? And the answer is no. And the, re and the thing that says, and the why or why not, moving left two and right three is the same as moving right three, then left two. And that is called the commutative property of addition. Commutative property of addition. Okay. Example two. How does absolute value, is this example two says to expressing absolute value as the length of an arrow on a real number line? How does absolute value determine the arrow's length for negative two? Use the number line provided to support your answer. So negative two just simply means to start at zero, move to the left two and end up at negative 2. How does the absolute value determine the arrow length? Well, the absolute value of negative 2 equals 2 because by definition, absolute value of a number is the distance from 0. So how far is negative 2 from 0? 1. 2 units. So absolute value of negative 2 is 2 because the length of this vector is 2. The direction does not change length. It can be 2 units long going to the left. It can be 2 units long going to the right. So absolute value is the length of the arrow from 0 to a given. How does the absolute value determine the arrow length for 3? Okay, so again, we're going to start at 0. Change colors here. I like using red for negative. Okay, we start at zero, and we're going to go to the right until we get to that number, which is right here at three. Well, that distance is one, two, three, so therefore the absolute value of three equals the length of this vector, which is three. So no, doesn't matter if we're to the right or to the left of zero. This distance of three, now if I do this, okay, and grab this, and I put it here, it is going to get me to negative 3, just disregard the arrow. The length of this line is 3 no matter where I put it. So the distance from 0 to 3 is 3, and the distance from 0 to negative 3 is 3. And that's absolute value. Describe how the absolute value helps you represent negative 10 on a number line. Okay. Well, negative 10 on a number line. We take the absolute value that tells us its distance or length is 10 from 0, and that minus sign tells us to go to the left. 10 units. Okay, so the absolute value helps us represent negative 10 on a number line by telling us the distance to the left we must go. Exercise 2 Create a number line model to represent each of the expressions below. So this is our starting number. We always start at zero, and that tells me to go to the left six units, which would get me to here. So that arrow's vector length is six. Distance from zero is six. The absolute value of negative six is six. The minus sign tells us to go to the left. Now this plus four tells us to go a distance of 4 from that negative 6 to the right. And if I do that, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and I end up at negative 2. So negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. 
Next example, my first number is positive 3, so I'm going to start at 0 and go 3 units to the right, and I end up at 3. That vector is a distance of 3 from 0, that length is 3. Then it tells us to add a negative 8, which means start at that point where we just left off with the 3 and go to the left 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we end up at negative 5. So 3 plus a negative 8 is negative 5. Example 3. Finding sums on a real number line model. Find the sum of the integer represented in the diagram below. So now we're working the other direction. Given this model, we want to represent an equation and come up with a solution. Okay. So I'll use green for the right. So this arrow here is going to the right 5. We started at 0, and we went to the right 5. So I'm going to write the number 5 as it's positive 5. Then I'm going to write plus. But then we're going the other direction, so I'll use red here. So then we went this way. We went a distance of two units. So I'm going to, a distance left means minus. We went two units, so it's five plus a negative two. And then finally, we're going to the right again. So that means that we're going to go this way now, three units to the right. So plus a positive three. Write an equation to express the sum. Okay, and then once I do that, I add them up. And where I ended up is my answer. 5 minus 2 was 3, and 3 plus 3 is 6. It says, what three cards are represented in this model? Well, if we were to do cards, it would have been a 5. We played a card game in the last class. The next card would have been a negative 2. And then the third card drawn would have been a 3. How do you know? It's the numbers assigned to the lengths of the vectors. Okay, I'm not going to write that. It's the numbers that were assigned to the lengths of the vector. So this vector was five minutes long, going to the right, so that's a positive five. This one is left two, so it's a negative two. This is a length of three, and it's going to the right, so it's a positive three. Okay. In what ways does this model differ from the ones we used in lesson? Okay, so in that case, we'd have to go back to lesson one. So let me do that. Okay, so here's lesson one, and here's what they were comparing. It said, how does it differ from the examples in lesson one? Well, in lesson one, we were taking the sum of seven and its opposite, negative seven. So we're going to the right seven and then back to where we started. And that was all talking about the additive inverse. So any number plus its negative is going to get us back. So our ending point is going to be our starting point, which was zero. So we start at zero. In this case, we went to the right seven, back left seven, and ended up at zero, which is where we started. Okay, so in what ways does this model differ from the ones used in lesson one? We aren't just doing additive inverse. We're doing other numbers and getting solutions that are other than zero. D, can you make a connection between the sum of six and where the third arrow ends on the number line? So here's where the third arrow ends on the number line. The connection between the sum of 6 and where the third arrow ends on the number line tells us there's two ways to look at this question. Can you make a connection between the sum of 6 and where the third arrow? So in other words, what they're asking is the sum of 6 and where we ended. Well, we ended at 6. So I could say 6, the sum of 6 and where we ended, and that would put us to the right 6 more. So I would draw another arrow from here and end up over here at 12. Would the sum change if we change the order in which we added numbers? For example, negative 2 plus 3 plus 5. Okay. So now we're talking about the commutative problem. Let's get rid of all of this and start over and go in the order that they said. So they say to go negative 2 first, so that's right here. So let me just do this. So now I'm going to use my pointer and I'm going to move these arrows to show you that their lengths are the same and I'm going to move them. So this is a negative 2. So I'm going to move this negative 2, which would be right here. I'll do it down below the line, by the way. 
So that would be our first step, negative two. Then it says plus three. Well, that's this arrow here. So I start it at the end point, which was negative two, and go plus three. Now I'm at one. And then finally plus five. So then if I took this one and moved it down here, there's my new three steps. And if you look, my end was the, was the same as before. So rearranging numbers in addition. It does not change the sum. So my answer to this would be no. And the reason addition is commutative. Addition is commutative. F. Would the diagram change? If so, how? Well, yes, the diagram would change. Here was my original diagram, and here's the diagram changed after rearranging the arrows. Obviously, they are different, and my picture is my explanation. Would the diagram change? Yes, the arrows would be rearranged. Okay, so this play the integer game with your group. I'm not going to do that in the video. And that is the end of lesson two. Go do your problems.